Hello my loves and welcome back to Create Your Life. My name is Simone and today I'd like to take the time to talk to you about setting up your systems in your business. So the reason why this is super important is because you're only one person and you only have a certain amount of hours in the day. So if you can start to systemize some of the tasks, it will give you back your time. Systemizing and outsourcing the things that are integral to your business but not the best use of your time is one of the smartest things you could do to help yourself and your business to grow and expand and you can use this in different areas of your life you know for example if you're finding that you don't have enough time to spend with your family you could put a system into place and outsource the cleaning or outsource the cooking you know so you can apply this sort of thing to all areas of your life but today I want to talk to you about the setting up of systems in your business so so I actually own a publishing company. I have over 153 books published worldwide, which is really, really amazing and super awesome. But I built that business with the idea of not doing it all myself. So I actually built that business with the setting up of the systems before I released my first book. So I thought it would be a good idea. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be the girl that releases 50 books in her first month. And that's going to be my claim to fame. And that's what I'm going to do. And I did do it. I definitely did. I just didn't run around telling everybody that I did it. But I did release 50 books in the first month, which was really, really awesome. And the only way I did that was by having systems. So at that time, I had a very set schedule of how many books needed to go out each week, how that needed to happen, what needed to happen to be in place for that. So that business required a lot of systems because the books would come to me and then I would give them a read only because I love reading. I could have easily outsourced that as well. Then they would go to the editor. Then they would come back to me. I would have another quick glance through and just check what she'd done. Then they would go off to the formatter to format them for Kindle and for Create Space, which was the print on demand at the time. Then they would come back to me. I would check them all, make sure all the links in the books were all correct, give them a reread. And that that's when I would start to get them uploaded onto the actual platforms. At the same time that this was happening, covers needed to be designed, descriptions needed to be written, links needed to be created. It was a very big sort of production, if that makes sense. There was a lot of moving parts because I'm not a graphic designer. I can't, I'm not great at designing covers, especially back then. I wasn't very good at that, but I could do the research on what sort of cover I thought would work. So then I had to learn how to articulate that to the graphic designers, which was a process in itself, even just learning how to articulate what I thought a cover should look like that was going to sell in the genre. Because when it comes down to it, people are only going to look at a couple of things with a book. They're going to look at the title, the actual cover, and they're going to look at the description. That's pretty much it. If someone's buying a book online, they'll also look at reviews and things like that. So obviously I did have a bit of a marketing team going as well to get that sort of stuff done and to, to put the books on all of the platforms. And so it was a lot, which was super, super cool, but it also taught me how to set up the systems for businesses that have multiple parts. But in a $50 million business that I worked in here in Australia, I also did work very closely with the systems development manager for that company, which had over 200 staff uh, in multiple locations around Australia running multiple projects. So systems is something that I really love and I see so much value in and I see it as something that can really help you grow and expand in a way that you just can't possibly do it if you're by yourself because you literally just don't have the amount of hours sometimes to do everything that you need or want to do or that's even in alignment or in your wheelhouse of things that you're actually good at. So systems is amazing. So where would I start with systems? So the very first thing I would do is think about the business and just get a general idea for the sort of things that you can outsource and I would be looking at the things that take you time, aren't in your wheelhouse and that you don't enjoy. So if something's taking you a lot of time, but it's easy to outsource. So for example, if you were doing little um, carousels for Instagram, and so first you write the carousel, then you've got to go into Canva and create the carousel, and then you've got to export it, and then you've got to upload, it, and then you've got to write the social media post that goes with it. 
essentially there's a lot of little processes in there, but you might decide that you want to outsource the Canva part. So you write it all, then you send it to someone to, to do the actual graphics for it. And then you check it all and write the post and upload. So little things like that, and just knowing what you're good at and what you enjoy and what you can spend time on, I think is definitely a, a, a big thing. And I also think that when you're putting systems into place, knowing what you can batch or chunk together at the same time is also amazing. So for example, if I was going to write a carousel post, we'll just use that as an example. I wouldn't write one post and send that off to the designer to make. I would potentially write 10 of them. Say you have one carousel going a week. I would write like even eight of them, two months worth, however many, four of them, however many you want to do. But if you know what your subject matter is, you should be able to sit down and potentially just, you know, spend a couple of hours and write those posts into an Excel document or whatever you use numbers. And then once you've got like your few batch, like your eight to 10 that you've written, you can send them off to the person to create them. Now, there's two reasons why this is a good idea for a start. And I'm totally off the, the track of systems. But anyway, there's a few reasons why this is good for a start is because once you actually sit down and start writing the first one or two posts and or carousels, by the time you get to the end of those first two, maybe three, you're in the zone of writing that style of content. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to keep going with writing those because you've already built up some momentum there because you've already done two or three. So the reason why that's a good idea is because it actually keeps you in flow of what you're already doing. And then you can outsource it to your person. Now, what I would do is to create this system is I would get something like Dropbox or Google Drive, something like that where you can share things. And I would create a folder called training for a start. And in that folder, I would have those little tasks that I'm outsourcing for my staff. So the first thing I would do is probably have a video about Canva and what your brand guidelines are, how they can access your templates, how they can adjust your templates, where they can find your photos, where they can refer to for other information if they need it. And do a video that just explains how you use Canva so that they understand how to locate things and how to do it. And most of the time they probably won't need that, but it's still nice to have it there. The next thing I would do is then create the template or the idea that you've got for what these carousel posts are going to look like and sit down and create two or three of these posts and then create a video showing how you went and did that so that your staff member can refer back to this video and see exactly what you did to create that type of uh, content. Now from there, what you can do is you can use another piece of software if you want to. Just on a side note, I would record those videos with Loom. Loom is a screen sharing uh, application that you can use to record yourself and your screen so they can see you as well. And I would record that with Loom. Then you can get it transcribed if you want to. There's other things that you can use to get that video transcribed so it's written as well. And then that way you've got a video and a write-up of how to do that particular task. I would then also set up a spreadsheet that of some kind, doesn't matter where you do it, but just a spreadsheet that actually says what training is available so that if a staff member has got questions about something, they can refer to the spreadsheet and see if there's actually a training on that task in the first place. So they can go onto the spreadsheet and see how Canva works as a training, and then how we do carousels as another training so that your staff members can go and check this stuff out without actually having to ask you about it first. Because you might find that the same questions will come up from different people when you're outsourcing. So you might find it easy to do little trainings on the same questions that keep popping up. So there'll be lots of little things that you can add into your training folder, which will really save you time later on. Now, then when you've got your system into place for how to do that one task, you want to create a system for how to manage that, obviously, because you need to be able to do the quality control and check that task. Again, I use spreadsheets and I just really like spreadsheets. I don't feel the need to overcomplicate literally anything. I'm so anti-complicate. I think the more parts that things have, the more trouble you can get into sort of thing, like the more little 
barriers to getting things done there are so even when I worked for that company the 50 million dollar one with more than 200 staff all over Australia even they just worked off Microsoft Word and Excel and that was a huge company with like massive accreditation and lots of systems lots of staff lots of OHS you know so it's one of those things that just keep it simple keep your system super simple Just keep it very, very simple so that people can follow it. And then so you've done that and you've put your system together and you've made a folder for that, made it really easy for your staff members to look at. That's when you can bring someone in because you've made it clear what they need to do. You've shown them how to do it. You've got a system in place so that they can refer back to trainings. And then you've also put some way together to track that. So for example, that might be as simple as you having a spreadsheet that is literally called carousels and one tab might be write carousel and you just tick that when it's done. The next one might be outsource and you tick that when you do that. The next one might be check outsourced. So once it's done, you can go back and check it and you know it's done. And then the next one might be write post and then upload and share. You know, so something super simple. You don't even need to have that many columns or you can have as many as you want, but I would just keep it super simple. Like I wouldn't go over complicating things, but getting those simple systems into place in your business makes a massive difference. And that can be done in so many ways. You know, with the book publishing business, I had systems in place for everyone, for the editor, for the formatters, for the graphic designers, everyone had systems because it was too hard for me to run something so big in terms of 50 books in the first month without having the systems in place where I could just look at something and see where things were at, you know? And the same thing with like podcasting, if you're going to outsource your actual podcast audio development, you know, or your social media, as mentioned, your videos, if you're video editing and that sort of thing, you can have systems around messaging people or doing engagement strategies. You can have systems around social media management. Literally the sky is the limit on how you want to apply systems to your business. But I would highly, highly recommend having a think about what sort of things you can outsource and systemize if you're finding that you don't have enough time to get everything done. Now, obviously, there are some things here that are going to be dependent on money and like finances. You don't necessarily want to be outsourcing when you're not making an income or you can't cover the expenses. But when you are, definitely start outsourcing some of the stuff that takes your time and isn't something that you enjoy. Now, if it's something you enjoy and you would do it anyway, like for free, like you love it, Maybe don't outsource that one because that's the things you want to do. You know, the things that are lighting your soul on fire is why you started a business in the first place. So maybe don't outsource those things, but definitely have a look at the systems you can put into place to outsource other things that you don't enjoy. And I'm not saying that any of those system softwares are bad. You are more than welcome to use them. I've used things like Asana, Trello before, all of that sort of stuff that will help the team stay on track. And it can be super handy if that's what's easiest for you and your team. So what I would do is I would try different things out and find what works for you. I know for me, super simple works best for me, but A spreadsheet's not pretty to look at. So you might be someone that can't think of anything worse than looking at a spreadsheet, in which case something like Asana or Trello might be better for you because it's more engaging to look at and it might help you in that way because you can just refer to it and see where your staff are at and that sort of thing. So when it comes to systems and development of that sort of thing in your business, what I would really do is just have a play around with what works for you and give something a good month. So if you try out a software and the first week you literally hate it and you're still learning it, don't count that. Once you've figured out how to use something, then allow three to four weeks to really try it out and test it and see what you think of it once you're actually in a routine, because it'll take you two weeks to get into a routine of using it once you even know how to use it properly. So try it out, but don't also get stuck in something that's not working. I think three to four weeks is a good amount of time to see if something's going to work for you. And if it doesn't, then let it go. Try something else. I think that getting stuck in something for six months or 12 months that's not working is not going to be ideal. So have a play with it and enjoy it. Personally, I find systems really fun to set up because 
you're, you are creating, it is a creative thing to set up the systems and it's puzzle, like it's like a puzzle. You're problem solving the easiest ways for your teams to do things. You know, if there's an easier way to do it, that's going to make it easier for someone else to replicate what you want, then find it and do it and look at it as like you're putting together the puzzle of your business. Like it's such a beautiful creative thing to do. So for me, I really enjoy that side of it as well because of the fact that I feel like it's creative. So even learning to just shift your perceptions on it and see if you can just find a way to make that process a little bit fun for yourself will also help a lot as well. Anyway, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's a little bit more businessy today, a little bit less on the spiritual side. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you guys have got a lot of value out of it. And I really look forward to talking to you guys again soon.